Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Prototype. Before we begin, if you remember last mission, we got a new ability in order to deal with detectors. The ability to sabotage them. Right now, the only place that detectors are in the game are around Red Crown Command, so they'll have to serve as my example. You can see that even though we're in free roam mode at this point, we are able to go and sabotage detectors as much as we want. Sabotaging is not just for that particular main mission. You can, If there is a detector around, no matter where you are, you can go and sabotage it and take down that detection. Which is really good because later on in the game, actually very soon, regular military bases will also have detectors around them. So if you want to do things stealthy, then you will have to go and sabotage them. Or at least that's one option for doing it. Anyway, I also wanted to take this time in order to go around the Red Crown area, because I don't really go here that often. There's also a crane here, and of course I like the cranes in this game because they give a good, um, good viewpoint. And it's just cool to just be on the edge of the crane and just look out like an eagle atop a perch. So not only does it give a good and unique perspective, the Reagan's over there, but I never noticed they put this in. Right over there is the Statue of Liberty, and I found that really cool. Of all the times I've played this game, I've never come over here, looked up there, and saw it. So I'm really glad I was able to see it at this point. So jumping all the way back to the other side of the city, we're revisiting a new starting spot, which is also revisited, so it's not really new. But let's go get the final three upgrades of our previous list. The first is the Dashing Slice, which is going to be coming in real handy for the next mission. And the next up is a less than useful ability in terms of the next mission, the Hammer Fist Smackdown. Incredibly powerful, but also really, really slow. If you're able to connect with your target, you can do tons of damage. Now, I would get the Street Sweeper, but the Street Sweeper I'm going to save for the next list because it unlocked after we got the Whip Fist, so... Reasons. But the final thing we're going to get after a long time is the Tendril Barrage Devastator. It's the first one we, we had access to, but I decided to get the Graveyard first. This one is very handy early on because it takes down organic biological foes very easily. And will also come in handy for the next mission. It's finally good that we have a starting point that isn't the safe house for a little while. But we have to go back and see how Karen is doing with her all of her glowy balls. Oh, I did get a go. I did get a person with the ground shatter. Okay. Let's go say hi. The samples you've recovered, I still don't have enough. I need you to go inside a hive. The substance at the center, the material the virus is producing, I think it's the key. With it, I think I can reverse the effect of the virus. And Alex, for what it's worth, I'm sorry it had to play out like this. Don't be sorry. Just cure this thing. Karen seems to be acting strangely. But if you've been paying attention to the web of intrigue, there's a little bit something different about her anyways. Now, she has two different kinds of genetic material, one from water towers and one from the outside of the hive. Now it's finally time to go inside the hive. Which is a bit of a question from last mission, is why did McMullen himself personally want to go into the hive in the first place? 
but luckily there's one right over here that just kind of spewed up for our convenience. Hi guys! Also this hive has a handy dandy little thing that is that we can use in order to actually get into the hive. Well, doesn't this place look pleasant? It's also all hollowed out for our convenience as well. So, like with the last mission with Karen, we have to go and collect all her wonderful yellow balls for her. Pretty self-explanatory. Karen Parker sold me out. That's a bit of an accusation right there, but it kind of makes sense later on. But welcome to what I call the first actual boss fight of this game against Specialist Captain Cross. I love this boss fight, honestly, because it just plays out a lot differently than the other ones. It's very difficult, and you also have to be really strategic about it. Now you can see here that I'm actually using the whip because the whip is actually very good. Once you take a third of its health down, or cross his health down, then he goes away because all these guys decide to come out and play. Which gives you some needed health because in the first third of the fight you actually don't get any sort of health upgrades. And Tendril Barrage! Because there's too many of these guys. So let's get rid of them. Because he won't come back down until they're all gone, relatively. This, and then a hole in the ground. So figure out what you want this side of the hole. So, Cross is all about counterattacking you. Short range combat is not something that's really recommended. You have to look for patterns in terms in terms of finding vulnerability for him. Mainly, his main vulnerability is when he's reloading after shooting all the missile, missiles and grenades at you. Which do a ton of damage, by the way, so you better have your shield up. The whip also... so the whip is very effective. The hammer, which I'm using right now, really isn't as effective unless you're really lucky and you have the balls to use it. When you charge up the smackdown, it actually gives delivers two hits, but it's really the second hit that gives the most damage. The first one really just makes Cross fly across the screen and not get hit by the second one. You're going to make circles around Cross a lot. Now on top of him having tons of grenades shooting at you, like that, you can shoot a barrage, you can shoot them one at a time, you can also shoot ones up in the air and shoot them out of the sky in a flurry, like so. Those are the ones that you're usually going to be caught off guard because their spread is huge. Now, in terms of getting close up with him, yeah, and see that uh, two thirds of my health just went away because my shield needs to recharge, and now it has. Now, short, now in short range combat, he's going to be having his elect his electro rod cattle prod thing out, which is what he's going to be using to counterattack with. This can be a bit of an annoyance, because when he has it out, you actually can't fight him head-on, which makes your flying kicks not really handy, and any other attacks not handy as well. He can also counter your whip with this, which is your long-range ability. I said it was good, but if he has his cattle prod out, he can actually sh shock you as well by sending the current through your whip back to you. Now, if you're still insisting on using the hammer fist and being real ballsy, if you can actually connect with the Smackdown, it still does a lot of damage to Cross. 
It may not look like a lot, but if you could fully charge it, the amount of damage that I just did there would have actually been double the amount. Get a squad down here, pronto! Little help here! Squad, on me! Drop in now! Now! He has a lot of different things to say at this point, so I might as well put them in. So now that we're two-thirds away through the fight, he'll bring in the military. So now we got infected, military, and cross and us. Always pay attention to Cross, though, because he is the most deadly, and you'll just have to be lucky with health drops, because they're few and far between. Because he'll tend to blow up the infected, which give you a lot of health in terms of consumption, but there's not a lot of that. Also, Devastators may work well against the surrounding enemies, but against Cross, it really doesn't work very well, which is surprising. And of all the abilities that I'm using, I'm not really using Muscle Mass that much because, again, close range is not something you should do. But if you're looking for something that's reliable and really well executed in terms of taking down his health efficiently, Graveyard Devastators are not the way to do it because usually he'll dive roll out of the way. But Using the clock power is actually very handy here, especially the dashing slice, which you should have. Just wait for an opening, like when he, whenever he's reloading or whenever he's taunting and gloating, and just get in on him with a charged dashing, dashing slice. Dashing slice! Other than that, it's really just a test of your patience, because when you make a mistake, you really feel the mistake. I keep trying to want to get him with a Devastator, even though I kind of know that it won't really work. Watch out for that. I will. You're back. Uh, back. Brown Spikes aren't really that efficient either, but, well, you might as well have them as well. Sometimes more guys will periodically show up as well, which is a bit of an annoyance as well. Yeah, dashing slices just get rid of a good chunk of the HP. Just whenever you are able to fully charge it. And the charge up is fast for the dashing slice as well. Only go for one hit as well, because he's really qu quick at being able to counterattack you because that is his main specialty. It's like he knows what you're going to be doing and knows how to combat against you. So this fight, overall, very fun. I like it, you have to think about it, and it's good. to know about Penn Station. In a way, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Zeus is down. Bring in the containment device. Transform. Yeah, Cross's injection unfortunately has rendered our powers useless. However, in order to make it a bit fair, we still have our strength, speed, and disguises. So at least we're not completely defenseless. However, it is a bit of an annoyance in order to actually defeat all the military in this area. It's weird how Cross just bailed as well. After just like, you think him in his funny shoes? I haven't mentioned his shoes before. They're weird. They're, the boots are weird. 
But it's like, I just fell off of the hive. You didn't think you would ever come and get me? No? I couldn't have gone far. Now, if you were also wondering about, um... Why Alex was feeling a bit of pain because, um, Cross mentioned Penn Station, there is a Web of Intrigue node that goes into a bit of detail about how Alex, because he doesn't really remember anything, if he, if he gets mentioned, like, if a name in place is mentioned to him, then he will start feeling pains. Um, one previous example was when he was at Karen, or his apartment, and he touched the portrait of him and, uh, Karen. Felt a little bit of a memory there. Now, in terms of our powers being useless, yes, all of our powers, the whip, the hammer fist, the claws, the muscle mass, that is all locked to us. As well as all of our devastators. They are considered powers as well. So we only have, like, base attack powers, we still have lots of kicks and punches and whatnot. And we also have guns. Lots and lots of guns, because the Military, go away, please. Thank you. Good they listened. But this... This mission is what really picked up the game for me once again. After a rather large slump for the first third of the game after um, the hunter fights, this, was the, this is the mission that I was waiting for. And I'm very glad... That the boss fight was fun and entertaining. But now we have to do something about Cross's injection. I wonder how Dana will see us. And who will be able to help treat this? Well, hopefully we'll find out soon enough. See you next time, everyone. Merchandise store. Merchandise store. Somebody needs to spell!